the last part in this session is going to be around non-verbal cues that we have to remember while we are delivering a speech I will pick up a few of them explain and try to give examples nevertheless would suggest that you actually watch a couple of videos and understand what kind of non-verbal cues you can actually pick up from the talk and how they are different in different occasions remember initially I spoke about three types of speaking events one which has an objective of in informing second one which has an objective of persuading and third one which has an objective of entertaining obviously non-verbal cues in these three scenarios will be different from each other and that's something that we will have to decide based on the scenario which we will be aware of in the non-verbal cues we will first try and understand three important elements which would be postures proxemics and gestures postures play a very important role while we are delivering a talk or a speech the way you stand the way you move across the stage it makes a lot of difference and helps participants keep a constant eye contact with you moving across the stage also helps the blood flow in your body and to a certain extent it does bring down your nervousness usually whatever is running in our backdrop is felt in the form of actions that we would do while we are delivering the talk which is why the more confident you feel while you are delivering the topic about the topic and your style the more confidence will the audience have in you secondly about proxemics I am sure you would have guessed the word proximity while I use the word proxemics and yes you are right proxemics is all about the interpersonal space between your audience and you depending upon who you are delivering the talk to and where they come from is how we have to decide or determine the proximic level amongst the speaker and the audience different uh, different uh, people from across the world have different proximic levels people from different parts of the world prefer different interpersonal spaces for example in a country like India you can go as close to people as much as about one feet whereas back in abroad somewhere in west there is an interpersonal space of at least three weeks that three feet that requires to be maintained when it comes to a stage performance of course there is a five to six feet difference which is always met, uh, taken care of but if it is a performance or a delivery within the classroom then there is a minimum proximics that needs to be maintained lastly we have gestures 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 are simple standard hand symbols that can be used while you deliver a speech or a talk yes it is very important for you to understand that these gestures can mean differently in different cultures something that means X in India can mean differently in the US or in Kenya and it is important that while we are delivering a speech we consider and understand what each gesture means in a specific culture and then make use of them just to ensure that the audience is not offended quickly I'll share about two to three standard gestures and uh, you could probably make use of them remember there are hundreds of gestures and it is important that you try and know as many so that you can pass on non-verbal cues while you're delivering the talk if we have to be asking a question like what did you have for your breakfast then the gesture would be what did you have for your breakfast when we have asked a question to the audience and the audience happens to have responded then the gesture that I can use is fantastic remember this gesture means fantastic in India but it might mean anything else back abroad another thing would be I kept thinking 
and which is when I stumbled upon an idea. So this gesture means thinking. Similarly, there are many many gestures that can be used and yes, it is a part of your delivery. With this, we've understood what postures are, what proxemics is and what gestures are. And yes, it is very important to have these elements while we are delivering a talk and we intend to have an impact in the and on the audience. Two more non-verbal cues that we have to keep in mind and yes, remember, they are very very important. One is eye contact and two would be the facial expressions. Eye contact is essentially to ensure that we are having eye contact with each and everybody in the crowd. While we are delivering a talk, it is important for us to look at each and everybody. Even to have a eye contact with each section of the auditorium or everybody in the classroom will actually make a lot of difference because that allows the audience, each and every member in the audience to try and connect to what you're trying to share. Eye contact has to be simple eye contact. And second would be facial expressions. I'm sure all of you must have had a smile on your face when I am starting off with this topic which is around facial expressions. It is very important that we go with the flow and we go with the feel factor of the topic that we are delivering. There are n number of facial expressions that are possible while we are delivering a talk. And having the right facial expression with the right connect while we are delivering a talk makes a lot of difference in what we want to share and talk to people about. If we are trying to share a feel good factor about a change that has come up over a period of time, over a period of uh, investment that a set of volunteers have been able to contribute to a specific cause, then yes, you can talk about it with a smiling face. That we have been able to come up with a lot of changes in the way people perceive prostitution. Another facial expression could be something very, very intrusive, meaning you are trying to make a hard impact point. For example, it is important for us to save electricity. 60% of the city does not receive even 2 hours of power. And I want each one of you to add in terms of contribution by saving electricity. So the way you are making your facial expression where you are trying to be tough on the audience, people will feel impacted. And while you are making some statement which is very very sensitive volume which is tone as well as uh, expression can be softer on everybody who's listening to you for example it was painstaking to just look at the kids being dragged in the classroom and being punished for having spoken to each other and that was absolutely not appreciable so this way you can use various facial expressions and try and involve your audience with you to be able to bring about the right kind of feel factor amongst the audience the last one in terms of non-verbal cue would be your vocal variety which we spoke some time back vocal variety would be your rate of speech that is at what rate you are speaking to your audience and is that relevant use of pausing which is to try and pause at the right juncture while you are delivering a talk third one would be articulation have you been able to articulate the topic in a proper manner tone and pitch these are a few things that you have to keep in mind when it comes to what you are speaking and volume of course is very very important while we are talking about vocal variety with this we have now understood what are the different non-verbal cues that we have to keep in mind while we are delivering a talk or a speech and yes remember they play a very important role and it is important that we consider each one of these elements and ensure that as a part of outlining we try and program this as well. I am sure in this session you've got a lot of insights around 
outlining the topic being able to organize your topic in a way that you're able to have an impact on your audience and the third one would be understanding nonverbal cues and how do we use them in different scenarios